goldfish won't talk to me. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. It, oh, it, <laughs> oh, it's really crowded here, isn't it? Oh, oh! I, I, I don't mean to be rude. I, I know you. Yeah, we've um, been to similar venues together. Um, you probably don't remember me. I'm usually just sort of um, reading a, a very stereotypically reading a book in a solo chair somewhere. Oftentimes on my phone. And it's, it's not that I mean to be. I don't mean to shut people out like that. I, I always hope that I don't seem cold. I just... I'm, I'm pretty shy. So... I, I think sometimes... I, I, I think sometimes, well, oftentimes... Shyness can be mistaken for being standoffish, and if you'd ever, I mean, not that you would, but what I'm trying to say is if there was ever a time that you wanted to talk to me, but I, I seemed like, if I seemed repellent, I promise it was nothing personal. Um, if anything, it was quite flattering because I'm. I can tell you right now, um, you are much better at socializing than I am. And you know, that's not to say I, I don't find ways to have fun. You know, despair is... <laughs> it's, it's fun, it's vibrant, and there's so much to do and to see, and... You know, I think... You know, and it's not that I don't enjoy my alone time I do and that's fortunate because many shy people they don't enjoy their alone time and that's really unfortunate I mean, I couldn't I can imagine not you know, just just constantly being alone and not, well um, <laughs> so you you must have so much that you want to do You're being really nice to me. I mean, it's, it's a good thing. It's well, as if it wouldn't be a good thing. It's just... Um, I, I guess I'm confused. It's... Um, and not in a self-deprecating way, I think. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons that I don't... Um, that I'm not very good at socializing is because I just don't quite understand it yet. I mean, I, I, I understand it as a, as a, a communication. Um, I understand the principle of it. I just don't really know how to do it right. <laughs> if, there's a, if there's a right way to socialize. But I, you know, maybe that's the trouble. I get really caught up in my head. It's, the thing is, it's it's hard for me to understand, um, and I don't like I said this doesn't go much deeper than this specific statement. It's hard for me to understand why you would want to be spending time with me right now, um, and while I feel like I haven't like this feels like it's supposed to be transactional socializing. I suppose. I, I guess I imagine people like you talking to anybody um, because that anybody has something really exciting to offer, like a like a sharp, quick-witted sense of humor. You know, maybe they made you laugh, or maybe they um, were complimentary, or maybe they're fun or smart. Um, they helped you with a project or. You see what I'm saying? And that's... That's not to say that I don't... No, 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 no. It's, it's, that's not to say that I don't think that I have anything to offer. Um, I, fortunately, I, I feel... 
I think that's the frustration. I know what I have inside of me. I just simply don't know how to express it. But therefore, you know, I think perhaps an obstacle to that expression is the very perception that socializing is to be transactional because how am I supposed to um, connect with anybody if I feel like I need to impress them? Um, you yeah, know, I was reading this really phenomenal book. Um, <laughs> um, okay, okay, I'll continue. Um, it was this phenomenal book. And there was a very specific quote that I remembered. And um, it was something along the lines of, don't try to impress people, connect with people. And that was sort of their key to everything. It was... Okay, it was a book. Um, it was it was a book specifically catered to shy people, and, and the author um, did a really articulate, very insightful job of sharing a lot of very functional advice. But you know, it's just easier said than done. I, I understand. I understand that to connect as opposed to impress across the board is helpful. You know, let me give you an example. Um, if you've ever interacted with someone who is annoying to you because it seems like they're just like flexing or peacocking or um, seem like they are just kind of like in their own world in a way and, and oftentimes that can strike you as offensive I'm sure because it may appear to be as though they're not listening to you or that they're just very full of themselves or that they're just kind of using you to make themselves feel good about whatever it is they're bragging on. Um, and this book suggests that many of these people, um, well, sure, you'll find the occasional jerk. Um, many just simply are trying really hard to impress someone because they like that someone. Um, but their strategy is all wrong. Their strategy ought to be, well, how do we connect? How, where do we find common ground and that's where you listen and receive and um talk with 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 one another um as opposed to talking at somebody um and i feel like you know it's i, I read that book and i was feeling so empowered because it all made so much sense and how like how fortunate are we to have like this one um Okay, this is what I'm trying. <laughs> I'm getting a little shy. Um, it's getting a little bit crowded by these fishbowls. Can we um, uh, do you, do you mind if we sit down? Um, I'm just feeling a little bit um, uh, crowded. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a bench. I'm not too far away. Do you mind? Unless you unless you want to go talk to other people. Um, if if at any point I'm uninteresting, uh, please, um, please go ahead and have fun. But it would it would be nice. It would be nice to proceed talking to you. I like I like talking to you. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is actually this is a really great spot. This gives us a really great overview of the whole fair. Wow, oh, look at all of these skilled conversationalists. <laughs> So anyhow, that um, so anyhow, that particular maxim, so to speak, it, it covers a lot of ground. It covers business. Imagine going into an interview, and there's so much lore about how to impress the person interviewing you. But it, it all comes down to well, if you connect with that person as opposed to impress them. Basically, it just seems as though the entire world, all human relationships, really come down to trust. And so in theory, um, I love this book and I had all the tools and I was ready to get back to socializing, but you know, perhaps trust you know, starts with trusting that in trying to connect with people that whatever comes out of your mouth will that there is no one right thing to say that there are many things that could 
certainly be the right thing to say so long as you're focusing on that connection but I also feel like there are so many wrong things that could be said um, I feel like there are just so many social cues that I need to condition myself to understand oh, nice and, and accept there. and explore Ooh. some of which are perfectly sensible and some of which are constructs and it's it can feel very exhausting and very overwhelming to really <laughs> worry that you that I may not be articulating like um dare I say a normal person and anyhow I, I basically practice makes perfect but it's it's hard to practice socializing when it feels like the stakes are really high. Because I know, I know that the more we do anything, the better we get, I understand that. Um, but I also know that... I, I also understand that feeling judged, and, and not just judged, you know, um, in my unpopular opinion, People have a right to judge. Um, I just particularly have a lot of um, insecurity about being perceived as weird. Simply because th that word, yeah, it's, it's it's sort of haunted me in my whole life. Um, but but most importantly, the reason that it's haunted me is because it just doesn't quite. It's so non-specific, isn't it? I mean, what is weird? Is weird... Is weird driving backwards on the freeway? Is weird... A fashion sense? Is weird... I don't know. Um, is weird not talking to the <laughs> boisterous crowds of socializing people and opting to spend your time with the shy person? at the fair. I mean, some would say that's weird, but they wouldn't say that you're weird. And so for a person to be weird, and I've heard it in so many contexts, I've heard it in the context of that person was sick, that person was deranged, that person was very irresponsible, sadist, that person was so weird, right? Um, but then I've also heard it in terms of simple things. You know, you're so weird, you do something silly or goofy. And then I wonder, well, what's the difference then between funny and weird? And I've heard people explain, well, there's there's good weird, like weird is good. And when I've asked them, well, what exactly does that mean? It's nobody really ever has an answer for me. And so that's, I guess, Something about being categorized as weird, but nobody having a collective explanation as to what that actually means feels vulnerable. It almost makes me feel as though if I am a weird person to people, then they will assume me to be just as malleable as that word. Um, <laughs> this is getting really deep. Um, Thank you for, um, for speaking to me about it. Oh, um, listen, I would be, in, no, I, I, I think I would be entirely too shy to speak with your group of friends. Um, and I don't, I don't want to embarrass you. You've been so kind, and I, the last thing I would want to do is make the day any weirder. Um, I just, I, I would be really shy. And everybody seems so good at this, you know. I think I also wonder, like, why would they want to speak to me? Why? I immediately assume disinterest. Now, <laughs> I do have a very, very close friend um, who is very good at this. <sighs> and she has always tried to tell me, look, you're always better off assuming interest from other people. Because you go, if you go in with an energy as though they're going to like you, chances are 
you are going to meet that wavelength. The two of you are going to find a way in which you like each other because your energy is essentially your welcome energy <laughs> and not in a, um, a narcissistic way. She makes it very clear. It's not a matter of gracing people with your presence, but it's, it's almost like an unspoken promise that your presence in their world will be good. And who doesn't want to respond well to that? She also described it a lot like um, when you pet a dog, and not to compare humans to dogs, of course, but I guess it depends on the human, but I digress. When you pet a dog, and if you've ever really, I wouldn't recommend it, um, I've seen people slowly, very, very slowly reach to pet the dog. The dog does not like it. If there, is, if there is ample hesitation, the doctor will presume that person to be a threat because I'm sure their instincts kick in and they wonder, well, why would they feel the need to approach slowly? I have not, you know, sent off any offensive vibes. So this person feeling defensive of me leads me to believe that I may need to be defensive of them, right? But then when you have people kind of go right in, um, now granted there's a line, you know, I've seen much like cats will scatter from people who try to like pounce them immediately. I've seen this, I've seen the same reaction in dogs. Um, but, um, as far as hidden talents are concerned, I am kind of the dog whisperer <laughs> because I sort of approach dogs in the same way that I like people to approach me kind of in the way that you approached me just, um, slow enough that I understand that they're going to be very gentle and, um, and confident in that gentle nature. So, you know, when, when we met, um, you didn't yell in my ear, <laughs> you didn't grab my arm and say, come on, let's go, let's go. Um, but you also didn't, you know, you didn't <laughs> gawk and, and, you know, make me nervous. You gently and confidently in that gentle nature um try to um well, i guess that's sort of it just to enter someone's space with a gentle confidence and from what i understand that's sort of like the um how do i put this that that's that seems to be the primary indicator of anyone with a stable sense of confidence is the person who who speaks who carries themselves with a quiet confidence. They don't have to flex, um, but they also don't have to cower. They simply be, they simply be good. <laughs> and basically you know, I understand that's the approach that I should take with other people, but it's just, I just don't trust myself yet. I just haven't had enough life experience. I haven't had enough positive history. Um, you know, I haven't had enough, like, historical analytical data, <laughs> not to sound like too much of a nerd, but really, um, oftentimes we build confidence because we can recall a string of successful experiences. Um, and when we recognize that that's prone to be the trend, we can let that self-conscious double take we do with our heads, just or within our minds, but then we can let it go. Um, once we can be certain that we've seen enough examples and proof and, and it's the same reason why so often um we know something logically but we can only feel it in our bones if we experience it for ourselves because while we may have that piece of data and it seems to check out racking up experience within within that uh, anyhow, I think I'm sure you understand. Um, you know what I've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to ride the Ferris wheel because that is something that I've also been very scared of. I'm terrified of heights. And I feel like, okay, maybe if I just slowly start taking on fears, just one by one, you know, nothing dangerous, nothing that would be, nothing that would injure me. You know, sure, a little bit of danger can oftentimes reap a positive result, but there's a huge difference between, you know, potentially getting hurt 
like trying a new sport and um, breaking your leg. You know, that, that, one's, that one actually, that kind of skirts the line between hurt and injured, but you will heal, um, as opposed to, I don't know, jumping on a firecracker and you're gonna be injured for your whole life. And so sort of weighing risk is important. And I do feel like, um, for example, this Ferris wheel, there is danger, um, but, it's, but it's a risk worth taking. Um, the odds are in my favor that I'm going to get out alive. Um, and the payoff would be slowly chipping away at some fears. And I feel like, you know, maybe if I get experience in being brave, then maybe that alone will help me be brave in talking to people. And once I can start talking to people, then I can build up that experience to then be even braver and understanding that then I can talk to new people and it'll just keep um, snowballing. <laughs> so what do you say? You have made me very bold today and uh, if you would be so kind to hold my hand on the ferris wheel <laughs> Um, I can't promise I'm not going to freak out a little bit and, um, make it weird, but that would be really nice. Um, would you be interested? <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to hurry myself up um, and if I try to back out just remind me that this is for the greater good right just remind me of the snowball effect <laughs> of slowly but surely doing the things that make me scared um, towards achieving the things that I want in life right that's really high <laughs> You know, I um, I don't know how you got me talking so much, but um, I really appreciate the fact that never once did you make me feel weird. <laughs> you've been, you've been very, very kind. I appreciate that. Very empathetic, even, and that is an admirable, covetable skill for many. I'm very impressed with you. Um, anyhow, <laughs> I'm just beginning to stall, I think. Um, whenever you're ready. Oh, whenever I'm ready. <laughs> um, I'll be ready after we've done the Ferris wheel, so I give you full permission to take my hand right now <laughs> and gently walk me. <laughs> Thanks. That's um that's that's one brave thing I've done already. Holding your hand.